Sergio Perez looked pretty good early on, but then got into traffic on the soft tyre, and he was he did a 10 lap run before the tyres went off off the cliff, which was pretty frightening to see. Nico Hulkenberg got involved, car got damaged, and then got that weird penalty for driving too slowly in the pit lane, according to the graphic. Well, of course, it's a bit odd because it wasn't the pit lane. It was in the lead into the pit lane. It was that straight leading into the left-hander, which leads into the pit lane, into the speed limit area. And yes, he was going very slowly because he was stacking up in the pit stop behind Sergio Perez. And I wasn't aware, actually, that a rule had crept in saying you're not allowed to reduce speed too much coming into the pit lane. So on that basis, he was given the fine. I guess that's some sort of precedent, driving too slowly on the racetrack, actually. So that's quite a nice thing, isn't it? I think a few of us, Scarbs, committee of people out there in Twitterland, should all, um, we should all decide who's been driving too slowly on the racetrack at each Grand Prix. Quite funny, I think, if we could do that. Um, but yeah, not a great weekend for Force India. They should have got more out of that one, I think. And, and then, of course, we had that funny situation after the first skirmish thing when all the guys at the back of the field who had started on softs rather than super softs didn't have to come in for tyres and stayed out there. And we had people like Gutierrez and, and uh, Harry Anto and Verline all running pretty high up the lap chart. Um, and Pascal Verline, of course, was the guy that shunted in qualifying at, right at the beginning of Q1 due to the, the, the water that was still dripping from those two huge... Uh, well, they're just they're overpasses, actually, of the pit straight. And, and that's one of them's the media centre, and the other one is the paddock club. Anyway, there was water dripping down, it was wet. And Pascal came out of that last corner, um, and, and two things. His teammate, Rio Harianto, kept the DRS closed, so he had a lot more downforce as he accelerated through the gears, uh, whereas Pascal opened his, had less downforce. And secondly, he was he had the car at quite an angle and had been all weekend, very non-Rob Wilson-esque coming out of that left-hander, where Rob would like a driver to stay absolutely parallel to the white line while he's accelerating through the gears and then move across to the left for turn one at the last possible comfortable moment. And for proof of that, if you're doing an acceleration run, you don't want to miss a gear in the low gears. If you're going to have to miss a gear, have to miss a gear, do it in the high gears, fourth to fifth or sixth to, sixth to seventh. Don't miss first to second. It'll have much more impact on the, on the run. So that's the logic of that, bearing in mind there's 300 kilos of load going through a car when you move it from one side of the road to the other on the straight flat out. Anyway, Verline wasn't doing that. He wasn't keeping the car to the right. He was always coming across quite early and he hit this bump in the wet at an angle, in other words, with quite a lot of steering on the car and lost the rear. Bit embarrassing. I didn't actually hear this, but a Christian Danner, who does German television, was telling me that afterwards, Pascal was saying, it wasn't my fault. It's all the fault of the FIA. They should have made sure the track was dry there and it's wrong. If so, that's a bit disappointing because it was the same for everybody, particularly Ria Harianto, his teammate, who was purple sector one and sector two when when Berline shunted and had obviously gone through there without any problem, without any real problem. And it was interesting afterwards to see Sergio Perez, Fernando Alonso and Nico Rosberg when he was on the on the soft tyre in Q2 all have big moments in what was still quite a wet patch. But they didn't bleat about it or complain. Anyway, that was only third hand from Christian Danner. As I say, it may well not be the case because so far I've been nothing but impressed by Pascal Verlein's attitude. Although I do think Ria Harianto's pace has been exceptionally good relative to this very highly rated, highly financed Mercedes protégé. If you think of where Rio, Rio's career's come from, he's done a really good job so far, I think. Interestingly, Rio Harianto's Chinese grandfather was at the race uh, and, on, and at qualifying. Rio doesn't see much of him. He lives south of Shanghai. And you can imagine what it was like for him suddenly to have a son racing in the Chinese Grand Prix, having watched him on, I don't know, followed him on results or whatever in, Q, in GP2 and GP3 all these years. So, yeah, Chinese relative. A Formula One driver has a Chinese relative. Good to see. So next stop, Russia. As last year, Daniel Kobiet goes to his home country with a great result just behind him. I think this time he'll keep his feet firmly on the ground and who knows, he could have another great weekend. I should add here that Daniel Ricciardo, after we spoke to him um, about various things, his tattoos and all sorts of other stuff, important stuff, really important stuff for Chinese TV, when he left the studio off air, he said, oh, by the way, mate, put some money on me for Monaco. 
So if anybody's listening to this, I think I will. I think Daniel Ricciardo and the Red Bull have a very, very good chance of winning the Monaco Grand Prix. But that's still a little bit away. The next stop, as I say, is Russia. So it's goodbye to China. It was an interesting time. The hotel was had no restaurant in the evening. The internet didn't really work for me, as I say. There was no mini bar. But apart from that, it was all quite efficient. Oh, and the view was very rear window, very Hitchcock. We're looking straight out to an apartment block. But nonetheless, when I shut the door finally to uh, say goodbye, get an early flight out of um, Pudong Airport, it was, um, it was with a little bit of sadness. I enjoyed my week, nonetheless.